These are two of our Aldabra tortoises. This is Dulce and Herbie. Herbie's one of our senior citizens here at the zoo. He's over 60 years old and has been at our zoo for 20 years. But not all of our animals have been here quite that long. We're gonna meet some newbies coming up next on Zoo News. Hi, I'm Jed Dodds and welcome to Zoo News. This is a really exciting time here at the zoo because we have a lot of new animals, a new general curator, and a new cafe. Not to mention a new host. We got a lot to do, so let's get started. This is Barassi, our 13-year-old grebby zebra who is about to give birth any day now. The gestation period for zebras is 350 to 400 days, and she's about 390 days along. She's real sweet. She's a, a great little uh, a, a zebra. She'll she come up to me and uh, I'll feed her a carrot, and uh, she's very trusting. She's a great mom with the last two babies. The grebby zebra is the largest wild member of the horse family. They are considered endangered due to hunting for their skin and habitat encroachment. There's only like 2,200 of them left in the wild right now, so. It means a lot to, to, uh, to breed these guys at the zoo here. It's very exciting, and we're looking forward to, uh, to a healthy baby. We'll check back on Frosty later, but now it's time for a wake-up call. It's going to smell to Mandua in here. Good morning. Yes, I'm here to bother you yet again. It's time to get weighed. Come on, wake up, sleepyheads. All right, come on. Oh, big yawn. Okay. Tamanduas are lesser anteaters. This is Filipito. We call him Pito for short. Come on out! And little Pito was Come born here on. about six Your months ago. Is he is being boy. trained to become a future on, education yeah. animal. Pito target. Come on, man. You have to work for it. So we're just basically doing this a uh, little bit of targeting with him so that he has to come out and touch the end of my finger with the tip of his nose. And then we tell him he's a good boy and he gets a treat. Pito's mother, Letty, isn't as anxious for a morning snack. Come on, Letty. Come on. Oh, yes, I know. It's so hard to get out of bed in the morning. She is a great mother. Patience is one of the keys to training, and Leslie definitely has it. All right, now we take the trip over to the hospital where the scale is and find out what you two weigh. The way to a tomato's heart and cooperation is through worms. They are a great source of positive reinforcement. Come on, guys. Come on out. We've got lots of good eats out here. You're going to be adventuresome, aren't you? Mom's going to go back to sleep. Letty, I can't believe you're sleeping. Your child is sitting on top of you, and you are sleeping. He's like, Mom, it's a variable smorgasbord. We need to go. Come on, Pito. Good boy. OK, what do you think? You think maybe we can go and get on the scale? What do you think? There we go. Good boy. You stay here. Just good boy. It's all right. 4.5, we're going to let you explore a little bit. This is all part of their training too, letting them see what they can and can't do. Very, very curious animal. <laughs> There's Letty. Come on, Letty. All right, let's get you on the scale. Settle down. Settle down. 6.5. There. See how big he is compared to mom. Tamanduas are just like giant anteaters in the way the mothers carry their young on their backs for up to a year. Double-decker tamandua here. Got left behind, did you? <laughs> it's time to make good use of this time alone with Pito. Good boy. Good boy, there's some worms right here. This is the thing to do. You keep them eating and not paying attention, and then you put it on any way you can. It's upside down, but it doesn't matter. As Pito is getting used to his harness, Letty has been doing some exploring of her own. She's like, wait a second, I have a good nose on me. I know there's some more worms in there. This is my dream. This must be Christmas or Thanksgiving. See how she uses her, her claws. They use those powerful claws to rip open termite mounds. Looking for the ants and the termites. They'll even eat bees. Look at those claws. Look at how strong I am. Yeah, he's a powerhouse. He is 122 pounds. This is Xander, our new male giant anteater. They don't have teeth, so anteaters use those incredible claws to defend themselves against predators. He's very strong. Uh, some of the things that he really enjoys to do are uh, digging on logs, and uh, he also really likes to dig in the dirt. He's been making some very big holes 
<laughs> As you can see here, giant anteaters are the mammals with the longest tongues in proportion to their body size. Xander is one of our two new giant anteaters. He's the larger and darker one. So they have differences in coloration, but they also have differences in their head shape um, that let us tell them apart pretty quickly. Zoe arrived um, at Reed Park Zoo this past May, um, and she arrived from Fresno. That's where she was born. And uh, when she first got here, she went through her quarantine process, and then we brought her out to the night house area and have been letting her get used to the exhibit and the night house and start to feel really comfortable with stuff and all of her new keepers. The plan is, is to breed her to Xander, but anteater introductions go very slowly, and they need time to get to know each other. And they are going to uh, start to have uh, more time face-to-face -face out here on exhibit. We're here at the Conservation Learning Center to meet another new animal, a relative of the anteater, who has a really important job here. So he loves to burrow. He's yeah, got he uh, long claws, and uh, that's how he gets his food. Okay. He's very, very friendly. He's very, very and he's very fast. He is. He's very fast. He's an armadillo. Armadillo. This is Wetzel, our six-banded armadillo. The word armadillo is Spanish for the little armored one. And he can use his armor as protection. If he's being chased by a predator into a tunnel, he can wedge himself with his back end out, and it makes it almost impossible to dislodge him. You can touch him. Now he's got poor eyesight but he relies on his smelling and he relies on his ears. I've never seen one and I've always wanted to see one. I didn't know if they were like around or they were extinct or not. It's very exciting. Another new education animal is our marble polecat, a relative of the ferret and otter. Come on, Jasper. Come on, come on, little man. Let's go. There you go. There you are. See how he's in that tunnel? He's very flexible. He can even turn all the way around and he often will go into burrows and, and after a rodent or something, and he can go in and turn completely around inside the burrow. You want to crawl underneath, see if you can see him? Try and touch him. <laughs> you see his foot right there? He has very sharp claws. He can dig a burrow in the ground to live in, or he can sometimes use one that another animal has used and left. Polecats have a very acute sense of smell, which allows them to find food in low light. He eats all kinds of things. He eats lizards and beetles and snails and small birds and rodents. Just like Pito the Tamandua, Callie needs some training before she can come out with the public. So what we are doing is we are preparing food for our fennec fox training. Come on, Miss Cal. Come on out. Hi. So this is Callie. Callie is our fennec fox. Our goal is to be able to bring her out in the public, but we want her to be calm and comfortable when she's out here. So these are just some of the initial stages of getting an animal used to her surroundings and some of the behaviors that we'll ask them out on grounds. Good girl. That was very good. Callie is full grown. These guys are the smallest of the candidates, so they only get about three pounds max. So she's at two and a half pounds, which is probably gonna be her full body weight. And after a bit of training, good girl. So sometimes we just do play dates here at the zoo. Everybody likes a play date. Huh, Cal? One of Callie's favorite buddies is Bandit, our ferret. It's still fun sometimes just to break up the day and give them both something extra and enriching to, to be able to go and do. And they seem to get along with each other really well. It's amazing to see how Callie's demeanor changes when they're together. We're using Bandit as kind of one of those security things too with Callie um, in that uh, if she's nervous with a situation, we can bring Bandit out um, and it kind of takes her mind off of the, uh, whatever's making her nervous. Um, and so it kind of makes it a rewarding situation. Fennec foxes are highly social animals and they live together in family groups that may have up to 10 individuals. They are extremely quick and agile and can even jump four times their own body length. In the wild, this trait can help them avoid a predator or catch a prey. Okay, so now we gotta get her back into the cage, which is also a trick. We can use a decoy, a decoy called Bandit. Callie, come here. Callie, look. Look, look Bandit's in here playing around, having fun. Go get him. Oh. 
I'd like you to meet a little guy that's traveled all the way from Buffalo, New York to be here. He's just finishing up quarantine. Come on. All right, <laughs> here we go. All right, this is our basilisk. He's a little bit worried right now because I just grabbed him out of his nice secure place. And today, he's gonna move out of that aquarium into a bigger aquarium because we, he's still waiting for his exhibit to be finished and we wanted to give him a little bit more room. Males have a distinctive high crest on their heads and backs, which they use to impress females. The crest on top of his head is gonna change as he gets older, he's, uh, but he's full grown otherwise. He is a bit of a handful, he is an iguana, so they do like to uh, hit you with their tails. So I have to make sure at all times that I keep his tail in my hands. Basculus lizards have really powerful hind legs and muscles that allow them to run really fast, but only for a short period of time. They're excellent swimmers that can stay underwater for up to 30 minutes, but there's something even cooler that they can do. The neat thing about these guys is that they can walk on water. They also are called the, the Jesus Christ lizard because, well, for obvious reasons. <laughs> so these are the ear, his ears on the side of his head here, and um, because he does uh, live near water. He has the ability to close those ears so that the water doesn't run into the ears. With his new aquarium ready, it's time to enjoy his new home. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, he's nervous. Look how he's breathing. He's breathing like. <laughs> he's been good. He doesn't know what to do. He's in shock. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cover him up. Our Basquez lizard will soon be on exhibit over by the Caymans, so look for him there. Now, as promised, let's check back in with Bruce and see how Ferrasi's pregnancy is progressing. Last time we saw Ferrasi, she was pretty much big as a house, and we were anticipating her having uh, her third zebra pole. On January 29th, under a full moon, Ferrasi gave birth to her third zebra foal. We monitored the baby throughout the day, and it seemed like that he was uh, getting a little bit lethargic. He was starting to have some diarrhea, which a little bit of diarrhea is, is normal at first, but uh, this was kind of uh, really profuse and um, it was actually a little bit bloody. So uh, we made the decision to separate uh, mom from baby. We had our vet treat the foal and with 24 hour monitoring by our staff, our little guy is thriving. It was kind of like, uh, like watching a, the, the proverbial Emotional roller coaster, you might say. Uh, watching a movie that starts out as a tragedy, going to a drama, and uh, ending up as a comedy with a with a happy ending. I love happy endings, so um, hopefully that, that's the case. Less than two weeks after birth, the new zebra foal is ready to explore his exhibit. There he goes. You see him coming out? His mama? got to get exhausted by the end of the day yeah, chasing around yeah, after him. Whoa! Yeah. So does Mama follow him around like we follow Ava so she doesn't get into trouble? He's been just running in as large a circle as he can manage and he's been very curious. <laughs> he's uh, moved up on the cranes and uh, scared the cranes a couple times out of his curiosity to find out who they are and uh, or what they might be. Now the male zebra, the adult male, will never be introduced really? to him. They'll stay separate. We don't want any aggression issues. What a great ending to a challenging birth. Yeah. It's a rambunctious little guy. Kind of reminds us why we're in this business. Uh, it's just, uh, a great feeling, it, you know, you don't get rich being a zookeeper, it, it can't put any monetary value on, on something like this, so uh, just to see that healthy animal coming from a kind of a, a shaky situation at birth uh, just makes it all worthwhile. From our youngest animals to some of our oldest, this is Shaba and Connie. Connie's been here since 1968, that's older than I am. If you have any questions about the animals here at the zoo, the new ones or the old, go to Tucson12.tv, click on Zoo News, and ask them there. I'm Jed Dodds, and this is bringing the zoo to you.